Hello, everyone. It's Saturday night. That means it is time for the Weekly Dig. For those unfamiliar, this is a weekly anime show where we talk about anime old and new. Uh, I'm Brent. These are my wonderful co-hosts, John. Konbanwa all. And Steve. Hola, And we are here to talk about, initially, Wolf Children. Mm. which we watched this past week. We were going to watch it last week, uh, which we did, and then things happened. And so we're talking about it this week. <laughs> um, this is um, one of Mamoru Hosoda's earlier films, um, certainly in his, <clears throat> in his family series. <laughs> yep. He seems to love that particular topic. Um, and uh, boy, I don't know how I'd summarize this film. It's kind of a weird one. Um, um, what were you guys' uh, exposure to Hosoda's films before watching this? John? Uh, some of the Hosoda stuff that we've watched as part yeah. of, of the reviews, that's probably been the vast majority. Like, I... Summer Wars? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Summer Wars... Uh, Phil and I watched that, oh, like, okay. several years ago, and I, I... Honestly, I don't remember how Phil was like, hey, it's Sunday afternoon, let's get ramen and watch... Summer Wars. Like, I have no idea how he ended up there. Mm. I'm glad he did. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it was just one of those things where, like, I had no idea who, so who Hosoda was okay. at all. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I really enjoy this. So mm -hmm. when it got down to, to Wolf's Children, it's like, I've been meaning to watch this film for a while. Mm -hmm. And it just, the way it came in, I'm like, oh, super. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve? So I had heard of Wolf children before i heard of us okay sure so uh kind of a thing but yeah uh, like john it's been pretty much like what we watch here on the channel some awards and all that um and uh yeah watching it i i was like i said it's been on my list for a long time so i was kind of happy to, that we got to it and um yeah it kind of threw me because i was kind of like okay so we're gonna do I, you know i knew to expect by this point after watching some awards mm. you know that there would be some interesting visuals and kind of yeah. things like that yeah. <laughs> you know and i what i did not expect was to see an actual werewolf basically yeah. i was just like okay i thought i thought this yeah. was going to be like an allegory of something it's like you know nope. or yeah no, mm -mm, no. <laughs> the lone wolf guy and the social yeah. girl and it's just a right. metaphor for you know social yeah, right. isolation mm -hmm. and you know choices yeah, made, something like we... that nope <laughs> it's a big old blue wolf yep, yep. 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 Very much so. Um, it's interesting, yeah, because uh, Wolf Children is, is very much Hasoda being a, an anime director and going like, hey, we can just tell the story. Like, why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it actually reminds me a lot of like, um, uh, like how Miyazaki will just be like, okay, and now fantastical twists, like, you know, Spirit Away, um, where it's just, you know, we, could, we can do this in animation, so let's just go in that direction. Um, it's one of the weird things about the movie is it is very much, you know, okay, what if, you know, normal girl meets werewolf, they have kids, what next? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and not, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, thankfully, not then they, they go off and have fight, 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 I think, vampires and such. I was um, about to say, Twilight <laughs> much, Brad? <laughs> I was like, mm. I, I was so glad they didn't go in that direction. I was just like, going, oh, God, he's like probably the long lost chieftain son. Exactly. He's going to bring all the tribes together. And, you know, no, nope. no. It's just, nope. And now they fight the vampires. Oh, Fired. really? We're doing this thing again, <laughs> aren't we? Like, yeah. Everyone's shiny, aren't they? They're going to be shiny, aren't they? <laughs> uh, right. No. Great. Instead, we get an, an actual, like, we, we, we get to see um, Yumi's conception, which. E yeah. I did not expect. <laughs> expect. I, yeah, I was not prepared for that one. <laughs> I thought there yeah. was going to be a lot more, like, implication of it versus, like, wow, it's like a furry convention. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and just to rewind, I mean, one of the interesting things about the movie, uh, to, to your point, is it does feel very much like, you know, young woman and man fall in love. And I, I do love how Hasoda sets it up as this very quiet, sort of carefully built relationship. That he's not really interested in her. She's intrigued by him, and they just kind of build this relationship over time. And then, like you say, it's like, and I'm a wolf. Um, uh, <laughs> by the by, the way. By the way. Just so you don't freak out, right? Um, 
Uh, I'm a Libra. How about you? <laughs> yeah. I'm a werewolf. Uh, 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 do you want to get one? coffee? <laughs> like, uh, cool. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so they have kids. Um, and then Hisoda does the thing, which he is yeah. so good at doing, um, which is that, uh, uh, you know, one day um, it's raining, and she sees, uh, uh, you know, a uh, wolf laying down there. All the way. And I love how Hisoda is just so matter of fact about the scene. You know, there's there's no like, um, you know, the, the heavens don't part. You know, there, there's no big thing. She's just in shock. She's just seeing this. And it's like, what do you, this is this is just life. Um, yeah. And I love the, the, from a storytelling perspective, the idea of, and what, is, you know, what can you do in that situation? You run up and say, that's my husband. <laughs> Right? right, like yeah. no, you have to let him go. Um, Which I, you know, gosh, it's so hard as it as it would have been to do, yeah. but I, yeah. you know, what I mean, that's my dog, and like God, mm-hmm. I, you know, yeah. nobody, nobody knows what's going on, so that's a perfectly valid thing right. to run up and be like, that's my dog. It's unlicensed. Mm-hmm. I'll pay the ten dollar <laughs> fine. I don't care. Can I take my dog home? Yeah. So, so I'm watching it. And, you know, it gets to the scene and, you know, of course they do the exposition and I was just like, all right, three, two, one. Yep. They're dead. Okay. <laughs> yep. Dude is dead. Great. Mm-hmm. Going after a pheasant inside the city in yeah. Colbert. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I, but you know, when they were, but it just really does a really good job of making you stop and think for a moment about those things where, yeah. you know, this is a secret life that they have because you can't, can't really explain it. Cause once you explain it, then they're going to go, wait a minute, you had <laughs> what, <laughs> what? And these yeah. are the children of that, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, you can't really just come out and just go, Oh, you know, my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, but just, and just, <laughs> I'm sorry, just how brutal it is. Where she can throw the thing yeah. into the back of a garbage truck and, trash and it gets compactor. compactor. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, mm. yeah. But it reminds me of one towards the end of uh, Cat People with Natasha Kinski, okay. where um, one of the cat people, they're people that turn into mm-hmm. jaguars. And one of them gets killed and they're, they're, they're doing the autopsy thinking it's a jaguar. And he cuts the belly open, and this arm flops flops out. Oh, wow. <laughs> right! <laughs> just like so, like I'm watching a scene, like going, wouldn't it be really messed up if like the unseen part of this, and they decided to go? Right. Oh, meanwhile, <laughs> they like go to the gar, you know, they mm-hmm. dump the garbage out, and this body rolls out. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. A dead man <laughs> rolls out. <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! We put a wolf in that bag. What? What, what the heck? <laughs> Okay, McGillicuddy, why'd you kill him? I don't know. Oh, hey, I picked him up. I didn't do anything. Oh, sure you didn't. Um, I was surprised at my reaction to this because I had that 3 2 1, and yeah. then almost no emotional reaction. Really? I get yeah. like emotional at like it's windy outside, <laughs> there's clouds. And I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, I. I don't know whether I'm expecting it. You mm-hmm. know, that the sure. kind of the three, two, one countdown mm-hmm. was like, okay, I'm girded up for this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like, it for I wanted, like, mm-hmm. and I thought about it consciously. I'm like, yeah. okay, I want to be sad about this. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to feel like the loss of the one she loves, the loss of the father of her children. Nope. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Wow, I feel jaded, <laughs> and well, I, I mean, don't know why. It, it just it it happened. I observed it. And it just went by, and I just didn't it, get emotionally connected to it. It was, it was because it was an exposition that was being told in the past. That's what it was for me. So okay, we fair. know. Yeah. So you know, it, while it wasn't like you know, hey, by the way, we're going to kill this guy off early in the story, mm-hmm. just so you know. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of like as they go through the exposition, and she's she's telling the story. Mm-hmm. You know how they met and all this stuff, and and I'm like thinking to myself, going, he might as well uh, be wearing a red shirt. I mean, that's, sure. that's yeah. honest, yeah. You know, and so you know, he was marked for death for me, so sure. it wasn't that yeah. that impact. But uh, but I think what was more impactful for me was that scene of just the coldness of just throwing that away and just looking at her and feeling bad for her actually, yeah. mm-hmm. and just saying, you know, there, there's literally nothing because. 
the only way she can grieve is when she gets back home and she literally has like maybe five seconds yeah. of being able to just fall apart. Yeah. Find a little ID, put it up there, make a little impromptu shrine right at the moment. Mm-hmm. And knowing that in about five seconds, she's going to have to take care of the kid. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing is that she's not yeah. allowed to rest. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's interesting because it, it hit me hard. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, but uh, uh, I thought it would have too because I mean it's, yeah. it is a like mm-hmm. tragic scene. Yeah, it's just yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, different people, different ways. Um, um, yeah, and so then we, we move into you know the, the cuteness. Let's be honest. Um, yes. The, you know, the, the little kids growing up, uh, and the whole problem of, of that and being a single mother, um, and very much you know appreciating the, the difficulties of, of raising two kids on their own. Um, raising puppies. Raising puppies. Um, <laughs> and so let's talk about that scene. Um, and again, seeing Yumi, you know, barfing on the floor with a silica packet. Uh, that's that's one that hit me. Um, yeah. Because I was like, oh no, like, and and yeah, obviously you know she's gonna live, but you figure, oh, is this gonna be some ongoing physical problem with her, or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So so yeah, that part where I I I really like that. It sounds awful, but I really like that part because it, it kind of shows you the, the, the reality of that, of that situation. Yeah, yeah. Does she go to a vet? Because honestly, it's at first you're like, oh, why would you take? Well, wait, wait a minute. Take yeah. A minute. You, that's actually viable mm-hmm. because of what's going on here. Yep. Does she go to the doctor? Um, you know, will the doctor say something when the kid turns into a puppy? You know, because I, yep. you know, I think I would probably have a question or two if that were if I were the <laughs> yeah. doctor. And, and oh, it looks like your little girl is a puppy. Wait a minute. Here. And it might be easier for her to stay in puppy form. Say, look, just revert. You know, and then you know, if if, if he st- you know, whatever happens to you, even if you go unconscious, you're still in that form and it's fine. Right. Yeah. Right. But I will say that when she throws the temper tantrum and, you know, like at the beginning where she's hungry and <laughs> she goes, and she turns into a puppy. But that moment where she's having a little temper tantrum, I'm like, going, oh, it's my niece. <laughs> yeah. ah. Yep. <laughs> nice. Um, and see, for this one, at, at another moment where it's like, mm-hmm. did the, do you go to the vet, do you go to the doctor? Mm-hmm. And I was curious to know her choice. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, but and she, again, I'm just wow. like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, normally, I'm yeah. like fully invested in this, like gripping the edge of the desk mm-hmm. going, what's she going to do? <laughs> and, and Instead, so, I'm like, hmm, she mm-hmm. ate something. What do you do? Do you induce vomiting further? Oh, you know, that's a, what's she going to do about the vet? Mm. Well, let's sit back and watch. And it's like, well, that was it. I'm like, gosh. <laughs> I don't know what's well, going yeah. on with me. <laughs> it's, it's, it, well, for me, it was like I was watching it and, and like, you know, she doesn't know which way to go. And I'm like, going, oh, God, indecision. The kid's going to get sicker and sicker. But no, she actually does the right thing. Yeah. Kind Both of. Poison uh, control. Uh, <laughs> right. Tries, uh, you know, makes the phone call and says, hey, this happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, good. You know, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. She finds a solution. And that's when you start to get an idea of who she is as a yeah. mother. You know, there's because not only is she not get to sleep at all, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, she's constantly finding a solution to all of these problems that yep. come up because it's not just raising a kid, which is, you know, I, I don't have kids, thank God, because they, you know, I'd probably be in jail by now for neglect or something because I'm <laughs> not really good with them. But um, now you'd be punching people at the PTA meeting. <laughs> what'd you say about my kid what'd you say <laughs> no um but you know it's it, it's not only that but it's also you know just kind of like it's not just the kid it's, it's just like you know okay they do with them when they're a puppy yeah because you see all mm-hmm. all because you see them in their cute little puppy form and all the the chaos and destruction around them oh, and they just look up yeah. they just look up and, and john you know this i have i've had pets as well but john you know this right now because you currently have them mm-hmm. they just look at you and you're just like i want to be mad but i can't <laughs> yeah like hey we just destroyed like 300 dollars worth of stuff is that fun what? Yeah. Oh, we had a <laughs> great time doing it you missed that <laughs> no, i love you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but it, it is it is interesting because it is it is both single mother and the single mother of fantasy creatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mothering um, in the most extreme and unusual circumstances. Exactly, absolutely. And then that's the thing is that you know got me into her character the fact that she mm-hmm. did just flip out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Having him around was at least some kind of anchor to this to be like, okay, well, he's a werewolf. And the kids are going to be, you know, some kind of werewolf blend. And, you know, I would have some help and this would go great. But she has not broken down. Right. She has not freaked out. Mm-hmm. She's not run away. She's fully shouldered this burden. Yep. And looked for reasonable solutions to the general problem. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I have mad respect for this woman as a mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the opposite of a typical sh- shoujo heroine, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, she says she says that thing to him uh, before he dies, where she talks about her father's grandfather's funeral, mm-hmm. and that he had taught her. I said, you know, when you're feeling bad, mad, sad, whatever, smile. So you know, mm-hmm. she's you know that's her fallback. You know, okay. Well, there's really nothing else I can do. So might as well accept try to make myself feel better a little bit and, mm-hmm. and soldier on yeah. And, and, and yeah grin and bear it yeah. and try not to fall asleep pit, pitch forward <laughs> into the washing machine you know? yeah, yeah. Exactly. um well this is where i, this... lo- I love her sleeping at the dinner table too. <laughs> yeah, right. like, mom yes <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those yeah. auto on cars when you stop right. at the stoplight it turns off you go to accelerate it turns back on <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the such fascinating thing about the film is that it is so true to life, to the parenting experience, to the exhaustion experience, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, despite the the uh, sort of fantastical element to it, because you know, um, when social services shows up, like, oh right, of course, oh, yeah, God. yeah, that's gonna happen, isn't it? That, 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 yeah. <laughs> no vaccinations, no school records, no registry, no nothing. Uh, like, oh God. Right. Um, and can she trust them at school? Right? Like, yeah. mm, mm, they are immature by definition. Yep. Um, well, you get a sense of that because he, the father, mm-hmm. doesn't go to the school. He just shows right. up. Yeah. Like, he just sneaks into the courses. That's how he gets yeah. his education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's not registered. I mean, his job is a nondescript job. Yeah. And, they, it, and they, do a, was. Yeah. they do a really good job of, of kind of implying the fact that like just having that sort of nondescript part-time job is still like hard for him yeah it, yes. that, that's the absolute max that he can you know commit to yeah well and then he says that you know he actually got his license and it's like getting your license is not an easy trick yeah so right. that you know what i mean the mm-hmm. effort that he went through to get the license so he yeah. could do the job is like really unusual considering schooling was not what he was going to go do, but he had certainly to study and take the test. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, a lot of compromise he had to make to get to that point. And actually, Captain Laser Eyes in the chat is pointing out, it's weird that she doesn't have a better picture of him. I wonder if she does, but it's the fact that it's his license that she treasures. The fact that it is the thing that he got through his effort. So it's not just the picture, it's the license itself. Um, That's why she's keeping that um, uh, in his sort of shrine. It's interesting. I don't know. Well, I mean, he being the lone wolf wanderer that he is, there may be no real place that a picture resides he could have had. Well, you know what I mean? The only thing he had... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, she could. Yeah, That's what yeah. I was going to say, because all he had was that sort of rumpled up right. uh, yeah, yeah. postcard picture kind of thing. It's like, right. that's all he had carrying with him other than the license. But yes, you're absolutely right. She could have taken a picture, but it's... Yeah. You know what I mean, they've obviously had enough time with two children to have had a photograph taken somewhere in there, but yeah, yeah. Um, actually, one child. That's the other horrible thing about the whole movie, is that she's oh. pregnant with the second one. So, so you, um, Ami never knows his father. Which is yeah, like, yeah. Uh, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, so then uh, off she goes into the wilderness. Um, off into the rural Satoyama in Japan to see the house. Um, and I do love this scene for how, you know, I mean, Hisoto really lets this scene play 
um, yeah. because you see the real estate agent going, come on, like this is, this is, it's available, it's an option, but here are all of the minuses, here are all the things, and in your head you're thinking, oh yeah, oh no, no, yep, this, this, this all makes sense. Uh, so then she's like, yep, I'll take it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great moment for, for audience identification with the, with the main character of going, yep, I, I see you through your eyes now. Yeah. Um, that there's nobody around. It's woods <laughs> and that field. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to stop puppy children from being puppy children. Exactly. Um, uh, whereupon you get a very My Neighbor Totoro sequence. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I wonder if that wasn't sort of going, <sighs> like, you know, the, the, I can't rebuild this up without having that scene in it. Like, people will just, right. just kill me. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't show uh, uh, Yumi running all around uh, excitedly. Um, it was a fun scene. It's um, all tilty. It's all tilty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Exactly. Um, they move into basically Act 2 um, of them kind of getting uh, established in here. Um, and the... Um, uh, the whole plot line with her kind of integrating with the, the locals. Um, and don't need to dwell too much on this, except how interesting it is kind of uh, establishing how you, know, you have the fairly typical, you know, insular rural community. Um, and then she shows up, and it should be pointed out, like at, at this point, you know, you had plenty of people, especially with the graying of Japan, uh, where there would have been, or there, and there still are, tons of empty houses out in the middle of nowhere where if yeah. you want it, you can move out into the country and folks in the city are like, oh, great, that'll be lovely. And they go out and try to farm and they're like, this sucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Being off Nothing the grid is a lot will... worse than I thought. <laughs> Nothing will grow. Why? <laughs> what am I doing wrong? And the locals are like, everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, um, that was the, the nice the nice piece that I had sent something to uh, to mm -hmm. Kira, you know, a few months ago, where I had mm -hmm. seen an article that was like, "Hey, Japanese citizens, Japanese government, it's like doing incentives for people to move out to these empty rural areas and repopulate them." Mm -hmm. And it's just like, "Okay, wow. Okay, now here's the reality, and here's the movie, and it's real." Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Because it's all well and good until you realize. No plumbing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, yep. Um, and so we move along with that um, as she starts to get help from the locals in the community. Because um, uh, she has no idea what's going on, but she has that great determination. And to your point, John, um, I think this does a great job of establishing the fact that she just, she keeps moving. You know, whatever yeah. needs to be done, mm -hmm. she, she, she doesn't let it stop her. Um, and she just does whatever she needs to do. Um, and you... Well, I like the way they, they bounce back mm. because everything she does as she's trying to homestead this this mm. ramshackle yeah. pile, um, <clears throat> everything she does harkens back to her meeting her husband. Oh. Because yeah. she's the studying university student. Yeah. What do we see now? Good you know, call. through through the different stages, we I see her studying yeah. about kids. We see her right. here studying horticulture, doing all this. So she's a very dedicated student to the things that she's mm -hmm. doing. And hallelujah for that, because I would yeah. not have any idea how to repair a roof and and ceramic tiles and <laughs> blah. if it was me, my, my kids would come up and go, Daddy, why are you sitting in a dark corner crying? No reason. <laughs> Just pull the tarp over your done. head. It's raining. <laughs> um, yeah, but she she keeps on keeping on. Um, yeah. uh, let's see here. Um, and this is the point at which, um, after quite a bit more of this. Oh yeah, and now the scene in the snow. Yeah. Oh, Ow. Yeah. Um, <sighs> When the kids are out running and kind of enjoying everything and enjoying life, um, and it is such a joyously animated sequence, yeah. um, and it just keeps on going, and you get a sense of okay, yeah, now they've kind of found themselves. They they found that the moment, and you you know you get a sense of that something's coming, right? You know you, you don't get this joyous right. for this yeah. long without, yeah, without a fall happening. Well, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> without reality going exactly um and so what happens is you know yeah i had not expected that to happen i thought it was going to be more like there's a transformative moment and then literally mm. the kids run into a clearing and like the entire village is staying yeah. around having coffee and you're <laughs> like hey Mm-hmm. You, those are your kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! They're all what the hell? Head, you know, head cannon. <laughs> yep. And then we got this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it just gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the horror of it, you know, the, the fact yeah. that it's, you know, it's it's this young boy in this freezing river, um, right. where you know, like that's just not going to end well, um, in in the best of ways. Um, and then, and of course, you meet jumping in to save him, um, which is lovely. Um, and I, I love that moment where you see the two of them. I hope this is won't be a problem for uh, for YouTube. Um, but seeing the, the boy and seeing Yumi off to the side, just sort of barely holding herself up, uh, yeah, with the 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 effort of what she went through, yeah. Um, and just again imagining what it's like for for Hana, running over to the the very pale form of her young son. Well, so too when you have you dogs don't go and and hold and like support mm. another dog that is something's oh, happened to. Okay, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean. So it's like her sitting to the side. It's you know somewhat akin to dragging another dog out of the water. Right. Yeah. And the effort is, ex, you know, the energy expended. The effort is done, yeah. and now it's. I'm recouping watching. Yeah, exactly. It's like, because without, you know, this is a different circumstance, but, you know, most 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 dogs don't have dew claws, which would be, a, you know, right. a surrogate for a thumb. Mm-hmm. So you can't, there's not a lot you can do as, right. a, as an animal with paws. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yep. I thought this was, this was interestingly crafted because a full-on person, mm-hmm. and this is not to be mean to say that they're not, they're not drawn and, sure. and scripted to be like people. Yeah. But a, a full-on non-transformative person would have been holding right. him and mm-hmm. being like, are you alive? Yep. And then you know, trying to do chest compressions or doing so. Right. But physically close to, my God, you're freezing to death. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought this was, this was done really with a good eye to detail. Like yep. they're stuck in that kind of, mm-hmm. we're people, but we're not people. We got right. some instincts that are not people yeah. instincts. We got some instincts that are animal instincts, and it's like this is a very animal sort of response. And mm. it's like, oh gosh, exactly. that's that's a tough one to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, and especially just because, um, and Captain Laser Eyes, you, you're absolutely right in chat. I hadn't thought about this. this is just how his dad died. Or died. Yeah. 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 Drowning. Yeah. Yep. Drowning in a river. Um, drowning in a river, chasing a pheasant. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Or had it, or having brought one back. It's hard to tell. Right, sure, sure. with feathers, yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but oh, oh, what a sequence! Um, uh, and knowing that he's okay and all that um, is just lovely. Um, that he's okay, and yet we find out he's not entirely okay. Oh, I don't know about that. It awakens him to instincts. <laughs> well, that is the thing. Um, is it, it very much is the, the kind of. I think the moment for all of them of kind of coming to accept who they are, yeah, um, uh, and then you know moving on from from there. Um, uh, and so then Yumi goes off to, to grade school, um, and they do such a great job here after, after having her little temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Kid, shut, shut up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Night. <laughs> um, I want to go to grade school. Well, doesn't yeah, Ami, doesn't, when Ami gets pulled out of the river, doesn't he, when he revives, he says, I saw a kingfisher. Yeah. yeah. And it felt yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, for the first time, you know, it's like, that's where he's got this, mm-hmm. things, gears are spinning now. It's not just like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's scary. Yeah. No, I'm embracing yeah. this element of myself. Absolutely. But go, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Absolutely right. Um, yeah, so I'll have to go to school. I, I really like the isolation here. Um, how Yumi feels, you know, alone in this yeah. crowd, uh, which makes a lot of sense because she's, she's been around, you know, nobody other than her family members, um, uh, and so she's kind of doing her best there. Um, and she's also had the strong advice of her mother to not right. transform. <laughs> don't 
do anything. <laughs> cause a problem. <laughs> Here's the little chant. Say the little chant. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, you know, when sports day comes, or I guess when, you know, just PE comes, you know, she outruns everybody else in school. It's like, yep. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can't hide that. Um, uh, yeah, and then, um, uh, oh, yeah, I, I found this a really interesting scene um, for uh, just because of, of what it is. Uh, when they go off to uh, the, the nature center and see the wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because it, in a sense, it doesn't do anything at all. Like, this is not a plot moment whatsoever. Um, and much of this film is, is not plot moments. Um, but just establishing so much of what would happen with Ami later and just kind of what he's internalizing about what it means to be who he is. This idea of being cage. And note that you only ever see the wolf through cage bars, which I love yeah. that, that detail. Um, and just that idea that, you know, this is, this is, one of, this is a possible fate. Um, yeah. You're just kind of... A yeah. cautionary, well, he had, yeah, cautionary well, he has, warning. He has, that, he has that big worry because he all the books that he sees, the wolf is the bad guy. And he's just like, am I a bad person? Am I a bad guy? And, you know, this, this kind of thing until he, you know, meets another wolf and starts to understand. And, and then he kind of gets confused because the wolf is, is just not, what, I mean, it's just captivity. So it's, it's never known. It's never been wild. Right. And, you know, he's a little bit confused by that because, you know, he's had this moment where he's just like, I hunted the thing. It was yeah. great. I really enjoyed it. How, how about you? Oh, well, huh? <laughs> you know, and, you know, the thing just looks away. But um, uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting that that a nature center would have an animal like <laughs> yeah. in, in it. Um, maybe the, well, didn't they Japanese say it was, it was uh, surrendered? It was in somebody, it was in a zoo or something it, like that. It was uh, in a zoo in Russia and it was surrendered and they, they opted to take care of it. Yeah. And there's no way to release it into the wild. So it just yeah. leaves this sad existence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's a very effective scene. Um, yeah. Uh, and at that point, I, I love how when, um, uh, Hana and Ame are going back on the bus uh, and kind of talking through that, how they're sitting there and they both get closer to each other over the course of the scene, um, to where they put the, the close, as you realize this is kind of a bonding moment for them to kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on. Um, one of the things to, 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 that's, I think, important for the, for the movie is how um, when they're, earlier in the film, when they're in the park um, and the kids are running around and she decides to, to leave Tokyo, um, she says, um, I yeah. want you to at least have this choice. Um, so everything she's doing here is really about giving her kids choice and letting them kind of find their answers. Um, and you see it really well in the, in the scene with him on the bus where she's just kind of gently nurturing him and helping him to kind of find his answers. She's not telling him what to do. Um, yeah. and, and that is really what's helping, you know, him appreciate her more. Um, I think it's just really cool. Well, also the ministry directed parenting guide has absolutely <laughs> no subchapters on wolf children at all. Exactly. Yes. Um, okay. I can't find it in the index. Where is it? <laughs> Why does the fact not address this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm with you, Captain Laser Eyes, too. I was hoping that the, that the wolf would start talking, that we did something with the wolf. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know. No. So, so did any of you have a wolf's rain moment when they? Oh, first totally. Wolf? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, when, it, when, the, when he just turned around and his, you know, his eyes are kind of golden. I was just like, yeah, straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's gonna happen now? <laughs> and and I think that there's also a certain aspect of it, of it playing off that that this is a movie with fantastical, you know, creatures, and so that absolutely could happen. I mean, it's, you know. Um, um, Hana you know, hunkers down and asks him a question directly um, and I think that the point is that you know not everything is fantastical <laughs> we've right. yeah. moved into a realistic phase um, yeah, so well that's what, that's what you know seeing Ame look at this and seeing you know a, a caged wolf yeah. it's, it, in my mind it's like you know this is really interesting it's an interesting communication issue because Ame's not a wolf Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, 
he doesn't have it, he doesn't even have a, the benefit of his father being like listen you know mm -hmm. as a wolf this is the thing that you, and Ami's not old enough mm -hmm. to have read up like his mother is reading everything constantly learning and trying to grow what she's how she's going to approach this Ami's not old enough to, to be like okay it's more about you know eye contact and tail posture and blah 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 so he has no idea how to interact with a true wolf mm -hmm. as a werewolf and you know that kind of the distance that gives him that the bars separate them yeah. quite literally mm -hmm. wolf from werewolf yeah. that it's like bridging that gap is difficult because Ami just doesn't have the tools to do it totally. yet right absolutely yeah um <laughs> uh, but, uh, and so we switch back to um, humor uh, for a little bit, um, as we get to, to experience what it's like for a young werewolf girl trying to fit in with her classmates and what she finds interesting, <laughs> what they do not. Yeah, look at the squirmy <laughs> thing I caught. Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, the box of bones. Yeah, <laughs> <Squeeze! laughs> uh, and then. Yumi gets uh, a new dress, um, mm -hmm. on which it should be pointed out are flowers, aka Hana in Japanese. Yep. So it's a connection to her mother, um, especially the the human side of her. Yeah, there's a lot. There's so much flower language in this film. Mm -hmm. I, I I I kept seeing it. I'm like, I don't. I, that's just too much to look up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> too much to look up here. It's like because it's fields of flowers. There's flowers, you know that that um, her mother puts in the vase next to her yeah. father's mm -hmm. picture. It's like those have significance. The significance of the flowers in the forest, the significance of the flowers in the field. Mm -hmm. It's like ah, data overload. <laughs> um, I love this one scene, and I think it's it's a little, um, it's a little bit of a trick. It, it, it's a little it's a little obvious what they're doing. Um, but the the sequence with the the two uh, school classrooms, where you yes, slide back and forth between first grade yeah. and second grade and yeah. third grade, back and forth, and, and again when you see it, you're like, okay, I see what you're doing here. Like it, it's it's not pretty, pretty subtle, um, but it's a very effective way of showing how they are interacting with people. How uh, you know Ame is always looking out the window uh, while. Uh, Yumi is just always trying to fit in. Just always trying to fit in. Yeah. Um, always trying to do what all the other kids do. Um, while Ame can only really fit in at the nature center. Yeah. Um, and then comes a young... A transfer student! Oh, no! From America? No, oh, wait. No, that's... Yeah. He's transfer. got blonde hair. Everybody picks <laughs> up. No, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wrong I was wrong. waiting for him to walk over and go, you know, did you know you have magic powers? Uh, and, you know, off they go on the adventure. Um, <laughs> but not quite that. Um, instead, and, I mean, they, they do a... a it, it's, it, watching this film the second time, I didn't pick up on this the first time, but, like, he sees Yumi from across the room, and, like, he's smitten. Like, in that 12-year-old boy way, he's just... He's narrowed in on her. Um, and so he goes over and starts talking to her. Um, <laughs> the... It turns out the worst possible way. Um, and she deals with that in the most classic, you know, tween girl fashion of, get away from me. Yeah. Um, uh, and it just, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, and then it gets as bad as it possibly can. Yes. <clears throat> Boy. What are those scenes that I, I think... would... Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I thought, you know, it was almost like a little bit of a red herring throughout mm -hmm. from that point in the movie on forward where he says things where he and he does things like you smell, you smell like yeah. a you smell like a dog, and, you know, things like that. And you're just like, because hmm? mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you have another moment of a red herring of the sorts with with another character that does that. Mm -hmm. Well, not does that, but but yeah. yeah, but but he but, you know, he does that and then. You know, I don't know. I, maybe it's because he's a twelve-year-old boy that can handle. Oh yeah, he just turned. She just turned into a wolf and tried to claw my eyes yeah, out. Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, in yeah. all fairness, I can't remember. 
I don't, I don't remember being 12 being like this laser focused on okay. one human being. <laughs> oh, um, I can. Um, but that was just me. Um, but yeah, and um, I, I, to that point, actually, when he showed up and he, he realized or says all these things about her, I was having a girl who took through time moment. Um, which, oh, okay. Those of you who've seen that movie, you know there's a um, there's a surprising connection between some characters, and so I was expecting it's not the same, but I was expecting something like you know him to go and and him to transform into a wolf in front of her, right? You know, yeah. be like, oh no, werewolves. Exi- I'm I'm a werewolf too. It's all fine. I could tell. That's why I could tell you smell like a dog. Exactly. Yeah, I kind of. Yeah. I was kind of hoping. Mm-hmm. I was hoping that's, what, that's what I thought as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, the red herring there. Mm-hmm. Come to the old school building where all the werewolf children meet. <laughs> oh, wait, exactly. cool. Where, where we have real werewolf class. Mm-hmm. Yes. A right. werewolf club. Nobody talks about werewolf, werewolf club. club. That's rule number First one. one. <laughs> Run around shirtless and at a again. Sorry. <laughs> We like to get oiled up and flex. <laughs> ah, no, damn, just go away. Exactly. I'll you werewolves. I, I, I just had a, had a had a, a thought that maybe this could have crossed over with Blood Sea or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, baby. Oh, so that goes in a whole new direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, and it going back and rewatching this, I I had forgotten like just how long this sequence goes on. Like, this, this larger sequence of, like, yeah. her hauling in front of the principal's office. And, like, everyone's trying to be as, you know, reasonable as possible, other than the boy's mom. Um, but mm-hmm. also, like, you know, someone tried to rip her son's ear off. Like, legitimately. There's some, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then, of course, you know, the boy said it was a wolf, it wasn't her. Um, and I do like the fact that... that you get the sense that up to this point he hadn't even thought to say that, but he's like, "Oh, that would get her out of it. Like th- 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 that would take care of it if I just say I saw a wolf, which of course it doesn't." Um, but it's, it's kind of like that 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 sweetness of him of going, "Oh, well, no, I can make this all better for you." Um, and also, and, it's kind of an homage to the idea of a boy who cried wolf. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like that's that's a nice little sort of flick <laughs> right in there. Great point. Um, yeah, and then she or, may, or maybe, or, or maybe he literally just realized, oh wow, I was like really creeping on her. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, could be. <laughs> maybe I got what I deserved. <laughs> There's yeah. a thought there, Junior. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maturity then, it comes to us in many different ways. Sometimes <laughs> being mauled by a wolf girl. <laughs> but then, like, she goes back to her her uh, her homeroom, and then like she runs off, and then she goes to her mom's car and has kind of a breakdown there. Um, and like they really, and it, it doesn't feel like it's milking the scene. It's like, no, these are the emotional beats that come out of a moment like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course he does the, the, the correct shonen thing and shows up at her house every day with her homework um, and, and tries to help her that way. Um, um, uh, and, and all is well. Um, and then Junior starts talking about Sensei. Oh. Okay. okay, so so did any of you think that the the possible connection between, you know, the really nasty old guy is the fox? Oh, of the mountain. Whoa. Guys, no, I, I never had thought consider of that. that either. I, I was is, thinking just Totoro when they were like wow. oh, this yeah. thing and I was just like, no yeah. shit. Oh, oh sorry. No, no joke. <laughs> Yeah, the I, the fox is the old man would make a lot of a lot sense. Of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that because um, he disappears because he drops out of the movie at a certain point, mm-hmm. and when sen- when he starts talking about sensei, yeah. and he is taking an interest of in what's going on, mm-hmm. and you do know the story from the, from what the father had you know told told her, which was they took me out to the country to this kind of place, and she was looking at the postcard and kind of like yeah, yeah, that at the this same might place. be it, yeah. So maybe not wolf, but maybe this guy was just like, "Oh, I know what you are. You have to keep quiet." Yep. And at a certain point, he's just like, "I think the boy needs to do it this way," mm-hmm. and that's yeah. anything that's because that's it. Anyway, that's exactly. supposition on my part. But no, so the I, old man I is a as a trickster kitsune. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, to point out, kitsunes are like shapeshifters. That is a, yep. a a powers they have well beyond any any conception of werewolves. Love that. 
Um, I thought it was the wolf. Um, I thought the wolf had been had been staying quiet the whole time, um, and was now going to be the boy's mentor, and was the boy's secret mentor. But sadly, no. Um, no. I love it. I think it's a lot, a lot better. Um, so yeah. Well, the fox, even you know, in in, in retrospect, the fox yeah. even had the grizzled kind right. of uh-huh. yeah, narrow narrow shifty mm-hmm. eyes of the of, of little angry grandpa guy. Yeah. yeah. I love Gosh, that. Steve, I that's love that. a good. I, I hope that's really true. Oh, somewhere <laughs> yeah. Minnesota has that, yeah. like, some kind of pen in book. Be like, yeah. and the old crank in the village is the fox. Be like, oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Um, and we'd be remiss if not mentioning the, again, very Ghibli esque, you know, tone yeah. of these scenes, the, 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 the massive trees and all that, where. And the heart shaped kind of glade and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it feels very, uh, very Mononoke. Um, as, as appropriate. Um, and here's where you start, I mean, you can see a, a giant wild boar. She's like, wow, all right, on the nose. Um, <laughs> it's got snakes crawling out of its eye. Oh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and, and, uh, um, and the kids fight, um, and you begin to realize that, that Ami is, is really, um, you know, going off in his direction, and you have the, uh, the big moment between him and his mother, uh, when he comes in and says, you know, the, the, the old box is dying, I have, you know, someone needs to take over. Um, and she knows what's going on. And I, I love this moment because, again, it's one of those things where I didn't realize until the second viewing. When she goes, um, no, no, you're not a human, you're a... And she, she pulls back. Because, again, the whole point of this was for them to choose. Yeah. Right. And, and she's now trying to choose for him. And so what she does, which again I think is a wonderful sort of mother thing, she pulls it and she goes, "Don't go up the mountain." I.e., that is a dangerous place. You should not go. You know, it, it does not connect to your identity. It's just don't do that thing for me. Uh, which means a wonderful compromise. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, she's. This is absolutely a moment where you you see her son making a choice and her realizing that that's probably not the the best choice, but should I intervene? Oh, it's a rough well, one. I mean, again, is it the best choice for a young human kid yeah. to go wandering up into the woods doing stuff? Yeah. As a young werewolf, you know, all of her research and everything that she's done, all of the yeah. book learning that she's done, there is nothing to prepare you for how yeah. to figure yeah. out when the coming of age of a werewolf person you know, it's like there's no data on that. So it's like you see the struggle she's having of like, I, I, you know, mm-hmm. as a human child, no, don't do that. Don't go there. Mm-hmm. But as this being, mm-hmm. you're at a loss for what to do, what's right in this situation. Exactly. Yeah, it's a rough one. Um, um, and uh, you see him start to make his choice. Um, as the storm comes in. As it must, uh, sympathetic weather, weather certainly. Um, as Ami goes off, sh- uh, she goes off, and uh, um, bless you, bless you, thank you, sorry. Uh, Yumi is left inside the uh, the school, um, and, and I mean, obviously, you have the, the the wonderful symbolism of she's in a very human environment. Uh, you know, surrounded by all these very human implements, all that kind of stuff. Well, he's out in nature. She, the, you know, uh, Hana's out in nature trying to find him. Um, and just this idea of, of being you know, very connected. Um, and then this... Um, and, and you see uh, oh, Hana um, falling. And I was... When, when she grabs the branch and falls mm-hmm. and goes down, I was like, no, no, don't do this. Do not kill die. off the mother. <laughs> you, oh, you know how. Mm. Yeah. I could see him doing it. I could see him doing it in this, it, at this point. Well, I mean, she goes off to see him to see the, you know, her husband, right. and and I'm just and I'm just like and like you, I was just like, like no, <laughs> no, come on, yeah, come on, no. Um, the know, father was enough. Come on, and see, this you is know, where is I done. wanted to cry. I wanted to cry. Uh, I couldn't do it. Again, I just, huh. I just had that moment of sitting back going, uh, I don't think you're going to go there. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit here. And I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm, and then the, the whole sequence where she's talking to the husband, I'm like, okay, no, no, there's, no, no. Draw we're back. gonna draw back. <laughs> we're gonna start watching Crayon Shinchan, and John's gonna right. fall like a baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll be mean, just sobbing hysterically. Like I don't know, I, the, the switch must have gone the wrong direction on this for day. I have no idea. Um, but then but before that, we do have the scene between the two of them, uh, the, uh, the two kids, um, as they just kind of uh, talk to each other, and I I appreciate the the structure of this where. The boy is obviously very much kind of a, a, a shonen protagonist type, right? He's very determined. Right. He's going to do his thing, um, and the fact that they let this the, this the the sequence play out with him sort of explaining that first, so you understand where he's coming from. That he's he has this, you know, no, I'm I'm going to get this stuff done. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done, um, and also I have protected you, and I will continue to protect you, you know, forever. Your secret is safe with me. Um, and that that is what she needs to be able to sort of open up to him. Um, what's the term? Um, um, uh, relationships are... Um, um, Dynamic? Um, I guess relationships are built on trust. Okay. Right? Wow. That, you, know, you, mm. you need that mutual trust in each other. And that, but the, the trust must be earned. That was the other part of it. You, know, you, you don't just trust blindly forever. Um, and is the fact that he opens up enough for her that allows her to trust him to then open up to him. Um, I think it's a, it was, it's a it's a wonderfully mature relationship the two of them have in that sense. And, and it's really interesting because Hasoda uses the same thing in Bell. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Okay, exactly cool. the same thing where it's about the question of trust. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Neat. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Interesting because that's not really a theme in Mirai. Um, it's kind of a theme in Girls um, Girl at the Time. Um, it is kind of a it Summer Wars. It is a Wars. theme in, in Summer Wars. It's it is a theme. Yeah, is it a absolutely. theme? Yeah. 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 So Hosoda's yeah. building, mm-hmm. growing, mm-hmm. changing, getting yeah. stronger, yeah. faster. Sure. <laughs> so we can build them better. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the six million yen man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the things I liked about this, this sequence was, you know, again, you know, they're going through the thing and it's post, um, post storm. And so the wind, you know, the clean, the clean wind after a storm comes yeah. through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, you know, I like how any other part of this I like is that we're not spending so much time on how they transport. They just, right. it's just, yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to play that, that game. We're not going to add five minutes. To this <laughs> to show up. Yeah. How yeah. We all, we only got that when the father started, you right. his hands started yeah, to yeah. change and then he changed and then that's it. It's like, okay, yeah. there's your explanation. There's your if this thing happens, we don't right. need to do this twice. But when she changes and she, you know, she, you know, the, the, the curtain blows back in and she changes to show him, you know, this is what I am. And before he says, oh, I already knew all that. This, mm-hmm. you know, she, what I thought was interesting was that the, on, on her change, when she decides to change, mm-hmm. she does not go full on animal. The husband Ooh. did. Yeah. Even though he was humanoid, he, you know, he, he had the snout, you know, like the huge, mm-hmm. it was a wolf's head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She chose a, very human looking yep. wolf absolutely and you know the son um mm-hmm. he chose to go animal like yep. he didn't even go hybrid he no. just went Boop, yeah he went straight to wolf mm-hmm. full-on wolf yeah yeah so you know that's and what i like and when i was when i saw that scene i was just like ah good we we we, we circled around back to the whole point which was you got to make your choice. You got to figure out who you are and be mm-hmm. comfortable. No pun intended in your own skin. Yeah. But you know, that's here we are. So that's that's what she she has already chosen that. Absolutely. And 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 then you know presented it. And well, it's, it's also, also interesting. To, oh, good, good, Brent. It's, go. it's also clever because they've established in the movie that she can transform with the drop of a hat. Like she has no yeah. problem bouncing back and forth. So <laughs> it, you know, yeah, it, it, it would be very natural for her to go. Okay, here you go. Boink, 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 boink. Um, like when the locals came over, they're right, having right. Tea. she runs through the room, jumps off the porch, and then the dog is running around. They're like, hey, you have a dog? She's like, oh, you ain't going to do that. <laughs> Fine, I'll take you to school to stop doing exactly. that. Yeah, stop doing that. Um, what I thought was, was interesting, too, is like the two kids are a bifurcation of their father. 
Mm-hmm. Their father yeah. transforms to go get the pheasant. He can transform. But he is firmly living in the human world, earning a living. He has a license. He's doing a job. He does the thing. And here you have his children that seem to be making their choice to separate the, that blend. Mm-hmm. She yeah. can transform fully. We've watched her be a puppy running sure. all around and having fun stuff. She doesn't do that here. She just sort of does the halfway. And she's firmly rooted in being amongst people. Yep. And her brother is the, nope, I reject that. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the wolf side of me. And I'm going, you know, all in. Mm -hmm. I'm all wolf. I'm going to, you know, wander around and take, you know, she has showed me what has to be done on the mountain. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to embrace this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just a very interesting choice aspect that splits their father's compromise into two different camps. Yep. Absolutely. Um, which neatly brings us up to the, the end of the story, where um, Ame clearly rescues his mother, brings her back to safety, um, but then he's going, he's leaving, um, you know, and, uh, and uh, just kind of leaves his mother there. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a little verklempt. Um, uh, and off he goes. Um, and so, but, uh, but of course, her, her reaction is to smile. Um, and then we get our, very much our Daniel Ma, where we find out that uh, uh, Yumi's going off uh, to junior high, which is two and a half hours away. So she's going to dorm out there, um, leaving her, her mom behind smiling. What do you all think of this ending? Because I, I have thoughts. So I accept that he becomes the protector of the mountain sure. and he's the wolf and that, that's, mm-hmm. that's the thing. And, you know, because th- this is about choices and, and sure. yep, yep. With, with, with what you are, mm-hmm. she has cleared the, she has clearly demonstrated that she can actually go farther than her father did, which is sure. she doesn't have to live a monastic existence <laughs> in, in fear of, you know, being able to change. She has firm control over this. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they, they talk about the mother you know, mm-hmm. like she never, you know, she never left those. She, you know, she stayed there and she's still you know, in that house on that, mountain. on that mountain and listening for the for the for the cry of the wolf, knowing that her son's all right you know, and all this stuff. And and I'm like going, <clears throat> you can get remarried. <laughs> you can go out and find another person. This is not the end for you. This is not you. Mm-hmm. This is this is. They're going on to their existences as persons and, ident- and, and individuals and things like that. She's just there. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, I did so. Okay, I'm going to be neutral and this is where I'm going to be at. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like a, a non life to me. And I, I didn't really care for that. Mm-hmm. John? I, <sighs> when I got to the end of it, the, the thought of that, you know, mom's still there in the house and on the mountain mm-hmm. is that. She was acutely aware of the of the choices that she gave them to make as people. Mm-hmm. That her daughter has made the choice to go off to dorm, to go off to school, yep. to continue on her path in the human world. Ame is on that mountain. So Hana is on this mountain mm-hmm. by the choice that in case. And that's like that was the kind of sense I had to it. It's like she's carved out this life. She's a member of the community now. She's gotten the house in shape. She's built a life in this community. But she also has this concern for her son who has gone off into the woods and has gone off onto this dangerous journey in life and that she's here. She's content with being here, but it, it just kind of felt like she's also here because in case something goes wrong mm. – he always has somewhere to come to. Mm-hmm. And it's like you never had a sense for their father that he had a place to be. He had the you know rimpled old, old uh, postcard, yeah. but he was a drifter in the human world. Mm-hmm. And it's like if her son has to come back to somewhere, right. it's right. that house and it's her on that mountain. And it's like, that's kind of the sense that I got for it. It's like, mm-hmm. she respects the choices made, but she doesn't really have to worry much about her daughter. Right. She still has the concerns about what could happen to her son. Right. 
And it's not that it's a terrible choice and she's foregone, you know, the chance of having relationships. Yeah. She's content with the way things are. Mm. And she's there, she's doing her thing, and she's always going to be there. You know what I mean? It's like that backup support. To me, the message of the film is mothers must sacrifice everything for their children, and then when it's done, yeah. they have nothing. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> the non life. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. you don't get to remarry, you don't your kids aren't around. You just have to kind of head off into Valhalla um, in this, this 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 very sort of uh, genteel retirement kind of kind of a thing. It rubbed me the wrong way. Because um, here's the thing: I, I totally understand uh, Yumi's angle. I can accept Ami's uh, decision, especially in the sense of that classic nobility of failure. This idea that he has made a choice, and even if it's the wrong choice. It's the choice that he has made, and so there is a a a nobility. And it, to your point, John, that, that idea of you know, well, he has to make a choice. He's made his choice, so I have to respect that choice. Right. Um, but I, it, it felt very much to me like the 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 mom got the short end of the stick um, in the ending department. Um, uh, well, she's what only like in her late thirties, maybe mm-hmm. by the end of this. Right. Yeah. And it's like With that, you know. Yeah. For everybody in that village, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, yeah, thirty, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like sort of everybody else in this village, including uh, you know, grumpy old fox grandpa. (laughs) They're all in like their late forties, fifties, and upwards. So she's like the fresh blood in town, the only fresh blood in this town. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's a little weird for her to be retiring. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but Um, it just—I don't know. It's one of those things that just felt like an odd fate for her yeah um, well the, well the other odd thing and, and this is me just being nitpicky hmm. how do you explain his disappearance yeah mm-hmm. so where's your son uh, dead <laughs> <laughs> washed away in the storm dead because that's actually really the only yeah, possible true thing. yeah mm-hmm. never found the body mm-hmm. he ran off to hokkaido and did you report it? Uh, no. No. <laughs> like, why would I do? Why would I report a twelve-year-old running away? <laughs> Come yeah. on, uh, ten He's a big boy. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've what? already escaped from child services once. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that said, you know that's kind of a nitpick on my part. Um, um, I I certainly got to the end of, the, of this movie and felt like I'd gone through a a wonderful sort of emotional ringer. Of a, of a film and a gorgeous film with that. Yeah, yes. I enjoyed it. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he really put all the stops on the on the art department on this one. Not that his other films are any slouch, but right. Yeah. Mm, boy, definitely a lot. But this one had a lot of scenery, a lot of a lot of um, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of stuff that I think Miyazaki would go. It's, huh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely yeah. like you know his Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, and, it, and he worked at Ghibli, right? Like that's yeah, right, you know, yeah. so there, there, there's certainly that connection too. Um, you know, he he famously left Ghibli, so there's also that element of it as well. So, you know, you know how much it, it's it's him going. You want some more Ghibli? Sure, I can do that. Let me show you. Here you go. You know, there's <laughs> see the thing. Else. Look at the thing I did. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on to making Boy and the Beast, another thing. Um, <laughs> Um, any other last thoughts on Wolf Children? It was nice. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. It, it was different. It was. Um, John, I wasn't quite like you, where I was emotionally dead. To, <laughs> <laughs> Failed to break John's but, iron heart. <laughs> but, yeah. But, but, but yeah. you know, it was. It to me, it was. It was on the lighter side of things. And you know it's it, it serious subject, but but yeah, you know, yeah. told in, in, in a way that wasn't just like you know, grave of the fireflies. Of like, here's a sad thing. Mm, here's another yeah. sad thing, and we're Two gonna put four. another Bam. sad Bam. thing. Two by four. Bam. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was enjoyable. I thought, yeah, yeah I, would, I would I would recommend it. I would, mm-hmm. I would recommend it. So. Yeah, I, I certainly enjoyed the film. I, I don't. I it must be me. I don't know what I was expecting, mm. and maybe. You know, you know uh, what I mean? It's like yeah. I think of Summer Wars and the girl left through time, and it's like I, you know, I, I wasn't 
I don't know whether I was just geared psychologically in the right kind of way that it, like yeah. maybe if I had really sat down and be like, okay, this is going to be an emotional ride and get mm. re- you know been ready for that instead of sitting down and be like, okay, um, I'm gonna watch this and then I got three other things that are going on and I gotta get this done. Um, hmm, okay, that's nice. I like that. It was a good film. Oh, we go. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that kind of surprised me in that respect is like sure. that I I felt I sh- there were the points. That were delivered, yeah. where I felt like I should have been like, "Aha, mm-hmm. cry here." <laughs> Actually, that brings up another interesting point, um, which I, I do want to highlight. Um, the Girl Who Left Through Time has really, I can think of two really hammer home drama moments. Um, we're just like, "Oh wow," you know. I I need to think about that. Um, Summer Wars has a couple more. Yeah. Right. Wolf Children has more, and this was kind of his maximum. I think this is where he found that like rhythm of here's how much kind of drama I can put into a movie, interspersed with all the comedy and all the other other kind of stuff. Right. Um, where any more than this, and it feels you know absurdly melodramatic. Um, you know, Mirai probably has about the same kind of scope yeah. uh, of, hmm. of of that of, of kind of uh, of moments. Um, but it's interesting that I, I think this is where he, he kind of found that balance. Yep. Cool. Uh, I think that'll do it for Wolf Children, um, a.k.a. Wolf Children Ame and Yuki, uh, or Okami Kodomo no Ame to Yuki. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back in a few minutes to talk about some more recent anime, potentially. Uh, and Ame's stuff. rain and yeah. Yuki's <laughs> snow. That is true. Which kind of... Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. See you then.